What is up? What is up? What is up? Welcome to another episode of the Mitch Davis Show. A very special edition of the podcast today. I'm going to be joined momentarily by the president of the Chick fil A Peach Bowl, Gary Stoken, a power broker, as some uh, say in the college football world. He is the man. He has been doing it since 1998. Gary, welcome to the Mitch Davis Show. Thank you so much for taking the time. Well, Mitch, happy Thanksgiving to you and all your listeners, and thanks so much for having us. Absolutely. How's uh, preparation going on? I know you guys have uh, two, basically two weeks till Selection Sunday. Yeah, things are going very well. We've been talking to uh, last week, uh, talking to all the conferences and their teams. Uh, we kind of take them through our institutional guide, which is about a 50-page book that goes through all the details and the intricacies of Bull Week. Uh, and then had meetings with Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Just we meet with them now on a weekly basis, uh, weekly meetings with Chick-fil-A, our title sponsor, uh, internally as a staff. So, you know, I always like to say we want to be prepared to run the bowl game a month before the game, because once December 4th hits this year, you have to personalize the experience because, you know, the two teams that you'll be hosting and, uh, by the time uh, December 4th hits, you know, we have uh, a press conference that day, a Zoom press conference with both coaches. We go to Las Vegas for a couple of days where all of college football meets for the induction of the ceremony of the uh, Hall of Famers. We come back, we do a press conference with the two coaches in their various cities. In the meantime, their staffs are coming to Atlanta to go walk through the hotels, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, et cetera. And before you know it, it's December 25th, and the teams are flying in on Christmas. So uh, we're off and running. I want to ask you, obviously, we're going to talk about the player experience and all that. But I've also heard rumors, like I was telling you before, I've been to the Sugar Bowl, the Cotton Bowl. Experiences were great. But there's something about the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl for the media members as well that you guys make it extra special for guys like myself. What goes into that to make that experience so great, not just for the players, but also the fans, the media, coaches, and everybody involved? Well, we really have a reputation of hospitality, and, and we really enjoy between our volunteers, our staff, our board, the city of Atlanta, the hotels, uh, the the airport, uh, you know, everybody involved, real, the restaurants. We really enjoy Southern hospitality and hosting people. And for us to have teams now being in the New Year's Six from TCU and Michigan and Michigan State and Washington, you know, coming in from around the country is kind of fun for us um, where we've typically just had ACC, SEC. We typically have an ACC or SEC on one side, and then it's it's typically someone from outside the uh, the region that comes into town. So. Um, you know, and, and you look at between our two Chick-fil-A kickoff games, the SEC championship and the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, four of the six largest conventions in Atlanta, which is the fourth largest convention town in the United States, are college football games. So that's how important college football is to the economy and to the hospitality industry, particularly coming out of COVID this, this most recent uh, year. So uh, college football is awfully important to the city and people know it. And um, that's why they're, they're so genuinely willing to host people coming into our town for our college football games. I want to ask you about that economic impact. 22 out of the last 25 years, obviously not counting COVID year, we'll throw that one out. You have been sellouts, $58.8 million. And then uh, since 2002, have been, it, it has since been, revenated from this bowl game and then you guys have donated over to 40 over 40 charities and talk about that in the not only the economic but what you guys do for charity at the chick-fil-a peach bowl yeah two points one is you know the two chick-fil-a kickoff games and the chick-fil-a peach bowl this year will emanate uh 100 million dollars of economic impact which is awfully important to the tourism industry and the hospitality industry that's how most bowls were created right um, the rose, the sugar, the orange, the cotton. We were the ninth oldest uh, bowl created, and, but we were created to give back. The Lions Lighthouse created our bowl game to, um, to give back to the Lions Lighthouse as a fundraiser. And so we've taken that to uh, the nth degree. We've taken it to heart with our mission. And so we're the most charitable bowl organization out of all 
I think it's 44 bowl organizations now. Uh, we've given $60 million back to charities since 2002. So this year we'll break a record. We'll give over $6 million just this year in charity. So it's awfully important to us and uh, something that's near and dear to uh, our hearts. Looking over to the game itself, obviously we've all seen the projections. Tennessee's at number five. George is at number one. That conversation has started not only across the SEC, but across college football. You and I talked about it off the record. But there's no rule stating that two teams from the same conference can't compete in the semifinals. It's never been done, but how big of an honor would it be to have that at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl this year? Well, certainly, you know, to have Tennessee back, um, you know, LSU, uh, USC, um, you know, all these teams back in the mix is great for college football, right? Along with the powers of Alabama and Georgia and Clemson, et cetera. Um, so in Ohio State, Michigan, um, you know, we're, we're blessed that being a part of a semifinal, you're going to have either number one against number four, like we've had in 2016 and in 2019 when we hosted semifinals, or you're going to have number three against uh, number two. So um, you can't go wrong with, as you mentioned, uh, you know, the four teams that are undefeated right now, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, TCU, and then Tennessee and LSU right there, USC right after them. Um, you know, people talk about wanting a playoff, but to me, the playoff started two weeks ago when number one played number three, number six played number 10, and number four lost. So number one, number four, number six all lost, you know, during that weekend. Uh, we'll see Ohio State and Michigan play next weekend. That's a playoff lead into a playoff game. Then you got the conference championships. So, you know, we actually have a playoff now. It's just maybe not as contrived as, okay, these 12 teams are going to play these games. So, uh, yeah, but there's no, um, there's no uh, uh, restriction on the CFP selection committee uh, to pick certain conferences. Their criteria is led by conference champions, you know, your strength of schedule, your um, uh, schedule against ranked opponents, your schedule head to head, you know, they have to take all those criteria into consideration when they pick. But to your point, if they picked, uh, if Georgia was number one and Tennessee was number four, that's who would play in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. I'm going to ask you about the college football expansion. Obviously that has been the hot topic. I think it's coming in 2024, 2025. Talk about the, what the impact will be on the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl going forward, and how do you guys plan to adapt with the new culture of college football? Sure. Yeah, the, the committee, I, I should say the presidents, the managing board of the CFP has uh, uh, approved moving the playoff of 12 teams to 24 if it can be scheduled uh, by the commissioners. The commissioners got through a big hurdle today when it was announced that they uh, decided on what the revenue split and revenue distribution would be of the money. So uh, there's a couple other issues they're trying to work their way through, but if they do move forward with a 12 team playoff in 2024, we would host a quarterfinal game. And then in 2025, January, Atlanta would host the national championship game. And then after the 25 season, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl would host the uh, national semifinal game. So um, some great, you know, games coming to Atlanta over the next uh, few years here, particularly if they do move forward with the uh, playoff moving ahead to 2024. Two more questions I have for you. And this one uh, I asked the AutoZone Liberty Bowl Executive Director, Harold Grader, the same question. And I'm curious to get y'all's response to Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. But NIL is such a hot topic right now amongst college athletics, college football what do you guys, if anything, do you guys plan on using NIL maybe to promote, maybe put a player's face on a ticket or a billboard or promoting the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl? What do you guys plan on doing with NIL? And uh, how do you plan on basically adapting with the culture now of NIL? Yeah, we leave NIL up to the corporate uh, sponsors. So, uh, you know, that's probably a better question to answer by Chick-fil-A. Um you know, we're sold out. Uh, we sold out in July. So, um, you know, we're just blessed to be in a, a great market for college football. 
you know, a lot of people call us the capital of college football for a lot of reasons, I guess. But uh, the corporate support that we get, the fan support, you know, having the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta, uh, hosting the SEC championship game, the Chick-fil-A kickoff games, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, um, you know, and we're very, very blessed to be a large part of what's happening in college football. Last question I have for you. Obviously, you've been doing this since 1998. You've had some great memories. Obviously, UCF doing what they did a couple of years back. Cincinnati getting down there and playing a really close game against Georgia. What has been some of your favorite memories and follow up to that? You know, when it's all said and done, 25, 30 years down the line, you retire. What would you like your legacy to be as president of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl? Well, I think the being the most charitable bowl organization, uh, and I'll relate both your questions. Um, in 2019, I believe it was, we had Michigan and Florida. And um, my vice president of sales, Benji Hollis' daughter, contracted leukemia in April of that year. Went through six months of chemo and radiation and uh, at six years old was getting ready to do a bone marrow transplant. And unfortunately, her little heart gave out and she passed away. So to celebrate her life in a positive way, I went to Benji and his wife, Leanna, and invited them and their daughter, Everly, who was three years old at the time, to come out on the field. And excuse me, we were going to sing Sweet Caroline, but took out Caroline and put Anna Charles, that was her name, in. So it was Sweet Anna Charles. We put it up on the halo board at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We, we had the PA announcer tell the story brought Benji and Leanna and Everly out to uh, on the field by themselves. And uh, we played the music and everybody had everybody get up and, and sing Sweet Anna Charles. And uh, Michigan, Florida people who were in the game that year, arm in arm, swaying and singing and crying. And uh, it was it was a beautiful sight to celebrate Anna Charles' life and uh, so that to me was my my favorite memory over 25 years. And then secondly, what I'd like to be known as is, you know, I, I'll never be individually wealthy enough to uh, give $700 million to uh, children's health care like Arthur Blank just did, which is admirable in itself. Um, but my philosophy in life is God's gift to you is is life. That's his gift to you. Your present to him is to take the many talents that he's blessed you with and use those for the greater good and uh, in honor of him. And so me being able to run successful events, create the kickoff game, create the Peach Bowl Challenge golf tournament, which raises money, and to be able to give $60 million away um, since 2002 uh, and $20 million to Children's Health Care of Atlanta to find trials and drugs to eradicate childhood cancer. Um, that's what I, that's what I'd like to be known as. We don't just put on college football games. We're trying to positively impact people's lives with our charitable donations, putting on first class events to create memorable experiences for people and uh, leave them with lasting memories. He is Gary Stoken, the president of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. I really hope to have you back on uh, leading up to the bowl game and the college football semifinals. Thank you for coming on. Would love to do it, Mitch, and thank you, and happy Thanksgiving again.